we're uh, starting a new thing again. All right, yeah. Uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to uh, apologize if it seems like the uh, actual um, video in this video, like the actual visuals, are moving quite fast. Um, the reason that may be is I had initially recorded this to be two separate episodes, but I figured I really just want to pump out uh, one video, uh, but in order to make it, you know, not extraordinarily long I decided to speed it up uh, to about 600% on each of the clips and uh, that's what we're gonna be working with I think so like as I'm saying this this uh, this power plant is already coming along uh, pretty good here yeah it's, it's come along pretty well um, so I'm gonna explain uh, this the series is Sturgeon Bay it's gonna be based off of Green Bay Wisconsin uh, again, it's a place I know uh, very well, like pretty much almost the back of my hand, really. Um, and the placement of this power plant makes sense because I don't know if if it's been shown on here yet, but there is a bridge kind of near in the background, not the big one in the background, but kind of closer to this power plant, um, you know, uh, inwards along the river. And in real life, there is kind of an equivalent to that. There is a power plant. I think it's actually decommissioned now as of like a year or so ago. Um, you know, just north of that bridge. And I was like, hey, well, this would be a good thing to start off because, you know, the city is going to need power and stuff. And I do have this nice power plant asset that I've had for a few months. And I I've literally never used it. So I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to use it. And I did. And you know what? For a simple little starting build... I think it turns out alright. Um, and right away, uh, to go on a more, I guess, serious tangent here, I do dedicate this particular power plant build right here to you slash Chesliov on uh, the City Skyline subreddit. Uh, he was a moderator, and unfortunately, uh, within the past two weeks here, he um, made the sad decision to take his own life and I feel that as a mod he really powered up the community he would you know charge up the uh, the inspiration of the players and I feel like a power plant would be a good metaphor for that so I'm dedicating this as the Tesla generating station in his honor uh, I just felt that it was a nice gesture because um, I had read that only a few hours before I started making this uh, making this video uh, may he rest peacefully. Uh, back on a more positive note now. Um, so I gotta give a big shout out, and I already did on uh, Twitter. I gotta give a big shout out to Prez. Uh, he's probably what well, like the only person I talk to uh, in the uh, community really. And for a few days before I started making the map and stuff for this, um my game just would not load i would be able to get to the title screen but every time i would try to load into like the map editor or load into a game it, it, it just wouldn't happen and i tried install uh, like uninstalling a bunch of assets and a bunch of mods i even went and did a complete reinstall of the game so if you see you know a bunch of little guys trying to pop up say hey if you need help with this i'm here yada yada during this recording that's also wise because you know I had to reinstall literally everything, uh, which I guess now also cements the other series being dead. I didn't even think to back up the saves, not that I would have. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the nail in the coffin right there. Was I had to do the reinstall, uh, but yeah, that even the reinstall didn't work. So uh, eventually, what I did, I did what I did two things: is uh, I posted the crash log and stuff in a paste bin. And I sent that onto the City Skylines Reddit, and they figured out what was going on, or, you know, they said what was going on. They said, like, I need a more RAM, which I said I can't really buy more RAM right now. I had thought about it earlier. Um, among the suggestions were also changing the size of my, uh, I think it's like a page file or like a data page file or something like that, which I had never heard of. Um, and I still don't completely understand how it works. But the long and short of it I know is that uh, after about a day I did decide to do that um, as something. And I'm not sure if it worked or not. 
Like, I'm not sure if it had an effect. I don't know what fixed it, because also, I provided Prez with a mod list of all the mods that I'm using. He pointed out a few things that I can get rid of, a few things that I should have. Um, and after that, I actually managed to load into the map editor, and I hastily put the map together. And originally, episode one of this series was going to be me creating the map, but I completely forgot to record that. Just, just straight up, and it wasn't that interesting anyway, because my maps are never usually too complex. They're pretty um, basic, not completely flat, but mostly flat, like for city building and stuff. Like, there's a few hills in this map, but I didn't go overboard with it because my main focus is, you know, on building a bunch of, you know, you know a big sprawling kind of city, and not the... Um, not the terrain aspect so much of it. That being said, the neighborhood that I construct later in this episode is uh, partially on a hill, which is accurate to the uh, real life equivalent, but I will get into that later. Uh, what's going on here is I am just um, connecting a, a rail line up to the um, power plant, and I know that the trains wouldn't be able to get into the power plant because of the one way rail, and I did that on purpose because what I. You know, the uh, normal rails in the game are always two-way, there are two lines on them, and I didn't really think that f fit for going into the power plant, like it would be uh, one rail line, but what I had it do is I had it go down into one and the other one would do, let's imagine it'd be a siding, and then it goes into that nice rail yard there with the funky angles that I managed to, managed, managed, managed to make work. Um, and I had to, when I, when I was trying to clear up a bunch of asset space, something that I did was I got rid of, like, the um, American Freight Train uh, props, like the ones that were, you know, all the actual uh, train cars and stuff. So I only have the engines left, and so that's what I'm just placing here in this little off siding, is that's like an engine kind of siding thing that I've got going on. Um, I also use these nice steel keys on the power plant, if you noticed, uh, because I finally have key ar anarchy, which I've never used before, and I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, that's all I can really say about it right now, because I'm already doing on something else now. Uh, I'm putting in a little um, guard checkpoint here, a little check post, um, which is something I literally never do, again, despite having had the assets for... A very long time uh, and I decided to make use of these nice little uh, guard rail posts and kind of the the median in the middle is where the uh, the actual guard uh, station is and then it goes into like a kind of hashed you know do not cross this line and then back down into a regular street and I think it's an interesting thing I've never done anything kind of in that way before and then I have a couple yield decals going on the ground leading up to the station leading up to the checkpoint and then a stop at it accompanied by a stop sign that I put on you know either side and really the only I, I thought I didn't have any guard little barrier assets which I was worried about but it turns out I have one and it's that one and it works well enough uh, now the fence it, it's simple enough um, just a fence that goes around the whole complex I had a little bit of trouble getting it to go on the key because I wouldn't want people to just be able to wait around in the water and then just hop up, uh, you know, around on the key to be able to um, get into the power plant area. So I made it just go on to the edge of the key so that, like, they couldn't do that, um, which I had to use a bit of move it for. Yeah, yeah as you're seeing right here, at first I kind of struggled and it was a little awkward. And then I just put in, like, a different kind of fence to make that work, and that actually ended up working out pretty well. Um, <sighs> yeah, I mean, so it's a nice key, it's a nice looking key, um, what else, oh yeah, I think I'm about to move on here to, um, connecting this road up to the highway, something was just on my mind, but it, like, it got slipped out of my mind, because I heard the, uh, the phone ringing in the background, but that, that's as it goes, um, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm putting in these uh, little coal storage lots, or just ore storage lots, I guess, from the Industries DLC. And one of the things I was concerned about when um, 
when putting those in is I was like, well, they won't get filled up because there's no ore industries that I have that are going around that are, uh, you know, going to be putting stuff in there. But as it turns out later, it, they kind of did anyway, which I mean, I'm not complaining. And here I just have to put in like some water and sewage and I'm sure I'll build like a facility for that later on. But right now I just need to have a solution so I can get things functional. Uh, which is an important thing. You want the city to actually work at least to some degree. You want their, you want them to have power and water. Otherwise, they'll, they'll wind their butt off. Um, I, I'm sure there's a mod to remove it, but I don't know about it. I, I think they should have water. It's just such a simple thing. Uh, anyways, the highway layout of this whole map is really pretty much from memory. Um, and it does cover all of the well, all but one, I guess, of the major highways going into, um, going into Green Whip, go, Green Blue, what? Well, uh, yeah, going into Green Bay, but in a way it makes up for it, and let me explain that. So, one of the things, um, so, so let me count, there's one, two, three, four. Four, I would say four probably um, main highways in Green Bay. You've got Interstate 41. Um, you got Interstate 43 on the other side, uh, and they come up and meet on the uh, north side of the city. You have uh, State Highway 172, which is actually the one that I'm working on right here. It's the one I travel most often because it was close to my grandma's house. That's why I would always go to Green Bay. And you have. State Highway 29, which um, I have on kind of the opposite side of where the uh, river is. It's supposed to be on the uh, west side of the river. I have it on the east side just because of the, you know, I wanted to have kind of a road going out that way. Um, and in reality, the road that ends up going out where it goes, that would end up leading to Door County. Um, which I had wanted to include in the map, but I didn't have enough room to do both the city and Door County, which is unfortunate. And actually, yeah, actually here, this is the last bit of this episode, is me putting in these uh, overpass walls. I think it's going to cut here in a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're on this. I made a little uh, exit ramp over here, putting in some, you know, these overpass walls again. This one was a bit more finicky. Uh... And one thing I did off camera that I didn't show in between these episodes was I actually put down an office building uh, just near to the highway on the other end of the river because there actually is some kind of building. I don't know if it's an office building or what um, on that, you know, in that location that I was uh, that I would always pass by. Um, so I decided, hey, just to add something, I'll, I'll put it there. Um... And one of the things, yeah, this hill is like a real thing. There's a real hill here. And the uh, highway does kind of cut through it instead of going right over it. So I tried to recreate that. And it's really neat because then the uh, the highway exit, the overpass, goes right over the middle of it. And the ramps just go up with the, go up with the terrain pretty much. And it's pretty neat. Um... I mean, I don't think it's anything special that isn't anywhere else in the country, but it's, I mean, unique in the way that I haven't done it in this particular game before. Uh, and it, it was kind of fun figuring out how to engineer this, even though it was fairly easy. I didn't get quite as uh, sh uh, sharp of, you know, or smooth, rather, I guess you could say, of angles that I usually like to get. Uh, but that's okay. And there is actually, like... In, in real life, again, there's actually an intersection, an interchange, right in, like, this very spot. I don't, I'm not sure if, you know, that road actually curves that way that I have it curving. Um, but that's the way I did it. Now, this road here I try to use, this nice suburban road I usually like to use. But one of the mods that I had to get rid of was Network Skins 2 Beta. Um, and that makes it so that now I can't change the trees on those little roads. So I can't change there to be no trees. Otherwise, that would be a fine little road. So I can't use that one right now, which is unfortunate. I'm going to see if there's an alternative. Because um, I really did like it. It's just the tiny little vanilla ugly green trees do not mesh well at all with the um, 
large amount of fall trees that I have accrued in this um, in this environment. Speaking of the trees, they're all fall trees. The only trees that are green in here are pine trees. And those only show up like on the house assets pretty much because I have not put them on um, any of the forest, you know, they I've not put them on the forest brush that I used on the map. Uh, I tried to, but it just didn't look balanced enough, so I got rid of it. It ended up looking too green. And again, still, it, for before this episode, I don't know if it was noticeable in the uh, first part of the what would have been the first episode. Uh, well, the second version of what would have been the first episode, you know, where we built the power plant like five minutes ago or whatever. Um, but the ground was still a bit green where there was trees, because. I hadn't thought to turn off the uh, the uh, forest ground color because I didn't think it would be a problem. But upon seeing it and realizing that the map still looked too green to be kind of a late autumn thing, I decided to uh, just go ahead and turn that off. And without it, it just honestly it looks so much better. Um, and I am using ultimate eye candy on this uh, map like I always do on all my saves. Except I haven't really had to use it yet other than to pause the day-night cycle. Because I ended up achieving... I mean, the look that I've gotten is basically exactly what I want. In terms of the, you know, what it looks like graphically. So, I, you know, that was just using Relight. Uh, and the LUT I'm using to make is the, uh, the Relight Vintage LUT. I tried using Photorealistic, but the trees did... The trees looked kind of too bright, but also too dark at the same time, and it was, you know, just not as good. Didn't really mesh well with the autumn trees, which was disappointing. Um, and speaking of, you know, the, you know, the look of it just being absolutely perfect, it turns out Reddit likes it too, because I was so proud of this yesterday night, I posted a few of these screenshots to Reddit, and uh, all day today while I was at school, I kept getting notifications about people like saying like, whoa, this is so good. How is this in the game? How many mods are you using? Is this vanilla? How can I get it to look like this? Yada, yada, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, I was just so lucky this morning when someone was nice enough I can't remember their name right now. Someone was nice enough to actually give me Reddit Platinum uh, for one of these screenshots. And that that's just an incredible turn of events. I have never gotten like any Reddit awards in the past. I, I, well, maybe that's not true. I might have gotten one silver. I don't remember. Uh, but Platinum I've surely never had. And I can't tell you exactly you know, anything that happens in the subreddit or the server, but I can say that once you once you get Reddit Platinum, you uh, you get access to some exclusive stuff, um, but they'll ban me if I talk, like, anything about it, really. Like, that's in their rules, is I, I can't say anything that happens in there. Uh, it's not like there's going to be anything too secret, it's just, it's an exclusive club, <laughs> and now I feel accomplished in myself. Because I made it. Now I'm going to end up being like the hoity-toity. I'm going to be like, oh yes, look at all these peasants. They, they've they never gotten Reddit Platinum. Mmm. No, but yeah, honestly, thank... Oh man, I'm so glad that that guy gave me uh, Reddit Platinum. I don't know really what it does. Um, I mean, it gives me like a month of Reddit Premium. I don't know how I'm going to use that. But, but it's a thing that I have, and it's pretty neat that I got that for just being for just having fun and doing something that I enjoyed doing in fucking city skylines of literally all things. Like, that's just incredible. And yeah, and here you can see the car armada just coming into here. And at first, I wasn't sure I was going to finish the rest of this neighborhood with all the houses, because it turned out to be a bigger neighborhood than I fought with all the houses. And uh, when it comes to the houses, actually, uh... I want to say there's maybe actually 12 of the house assets of the 35 that I made ended up being completely broken because uh, I don't remember entirely the message that it said but it it said when I loaded in initially to I think it was this that um, it, the houses cannot have um, offenses or other networks in them which is interesting I don't know why that would be a thing um, 
but if I were to remove that, that would mean that I probably wouldn't be able to have the same amount of props on those houses because every house house that has a 64 prop limit and uh, if I were to use fences for you know most of those props and it doesn't leave me a whole lot of room on trees and such and that's unfortunate because these trees are a vital part of it but I mean I can still make do with the amount of uh, the amount of assets I have and the buildings themselves are nice and the, and the buildings themselves are nice enough um, the cat just opened my door there um, but what really sells it is the trees involved. And there's a few, yeah, right there is actually a pine tree. There's a few involved here and there, uh, like a few green trees. But again, it's all, uh, other than pine trees, it's all either, um, like, very lush fall trees. I don't know if lush is the right term because it's not green. But, like, very bushy fall trees. Or, um... Or mostly bear trees, which also give a really nice kind of late fall feel. And I took the time to get all of these assets together in the asset editor, and um, just go to go to town on detailing them for a whole evening. And uh, it it was it was not fun. I would say it was not fun detailing them, um, but it's worth it definitely. In the end, it's a major upgrade over there base assets and if you haven't seen the tutorial yet I think I think it's by taser on uh, how to do that I would recommend going and doing that because um, it's it, it'll really improve your cities and uh, it, it certainly has made this one look very good so far now actually one of the things here is you noticed on that one street I have not put, uh, put any uh, houses on the other side of it and that is because I'm not sure how I'm going to do the th something over there in real life there's some kind of like I don't know if it's like a heritage park is what they call it or not but there's some kind of historical site park thing over there uh, and I want to you know obviously recreate something like that I don't know how I'm going to do it if I'm just going to do a huge park if I'm going to do like a big graveyard I don't know what I'm going to do really um but I'm going to have to make some plans for that, and we're going to work on it. We're going to get it uh, looking pretty nice, I hope. Um, I did make sure to put a few churches in here, because I have, I think, three or four church assets. And although, you know, two of them are fairly similar, it's none of them are overly detailed. It's just, it's a church is a little thing that just, like, adds to kind of the feel of a community like this. And I really feel that one in particular I have two that are like white or grayish but there's one brown one I don't know if I placed it yet but there's one brown church that is just it just absolutely blows me away uh, through its sheer simplicity yet manages to be absolutely fantastic you can see it kind of in the corner there if you look closely I don't know uh, the sink might be a little bit off I'm not quite sure um, I think I'm actually starting to get close to the end of uh putting all these houses in finally I, th I think that's how I felt last night when I was actually putting them in is I'm like oh my gosh I'm finally almost done uh, I did put some I don't know if you saw it earlier I didn't talk about it I did put some commercial in not necessarily not necessarily commercial but a few little shopping areas like I've got this one little uh, strip mall kind of thing going on I've got a bowling lane center and then I did manage to get a uh, fire station in uh, as well as a police station and some garbage and I uh, I needed to put the garbage somewhere over here because it wouldn't reach if I were to like sneak it inside the power plant um, so I just kind of stuck the uh, I, I, I stuck the uh, garbage right inside of the police station <clears throat> uh, and yeah no comments about it but it's a thing that I did uh, right here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line up these uh, apartments and at first I'm happy with them, but then I take a look from a different angle, and it really ruins the overall aesthetic and feel of the uh, of the neighborhood just by having these this one block of these ugly suburban apartments just tower over everything else in the whole fall, you know, suburban community theme here. So, uh, yeah, here I'm just like, yeah, this doesn't work, and I get rid of it and just fill it up with more of these little houses, which... I'm sure is an upgrade. Uh, pretty much everyone could probably agree on that. And uh, speaking of apartments, there was a small complex of apartments that I made a little while ago. I don't know if you saw it. Um, 
I don't know if I placed the second one yet, but I, I placed this, uh, I think it's the Veals in a Mars City asset. Um, and then I ended up placing the comments at Sun City and a few Red Rock Plaza little commercial things to, you know, add some spice to it. And those don't have logos on them, so I decided to, uh, to make some, you know, to put some on there of my own accord. I end up getting there to be a Starbucks, a uh, Papa John's, a random liquor store, which I used a random, like, actual vanilla asset to be the name of. And, um... This uh, one that I think is supposed to be like a tailoring store, I think it's like I think the sign is uh, called like Taylor the Tailor or something like that, and I don't know if you'd notice because you know, I tried to put the big liquor sign, the big sign that with the sign it just says liquor next to the actual liquor store, but it wouldn't fit without like hitting someone on the sidewalk, so I had to put it above the uh, other side of that one particular building, which is where the uh, little tailor thing was. Um, oh yeah, there's also a Subway. I forgot the Subway. So there's a Starbucks, a Subway, Papa John's, uh, liquor store. Yeah, I haven't put that here yet. There, is, there it is, and I haven't put it there yet. But I think that's about to be the last thing that I'm going to do. I add a couple flag assets to that. I was adding a, uh, a lot of flags in the asset editor. Um, because it was a small detail, but I think it really added to the, um, to the theme to hammer it in that, like... Yeah, this is America. This is very suburban America. Or, well, I mean, not the suburban here. This is like urban, but a sub it's a suburb in urban America. I don't wait. No, of course it'd be a. Su you can't have suburban America without be without it being near urban America. That's not okay. Well, you get the idea. It's a suburb. It's American, and Americans. Oh boy, they do love their flags. Uh, yeah. So, okay, there's the comments at Sun City, and I think here's where I start to figure out. I'll put some commercial back here. And, yeah, I feel, the, the flags, they don't add a whole ton of, um... Well, no, I shouldn't say that. They do add a lot, but, I mean, they're not much. They're a simple little thing that you just stick on the front of a house... And it just adds to the uh, kind of patriotic feel. And I don't know why I'd really want the patriotic feel, because it's not like it's 4th of July. Um, but just that kind of... What I'm trying to capture is that mid-October kind of feeling where people are starting to gear up for Halloween. Um, you know, kids are in school. You might have a few, you know, school carnivals going on. And I just feel like that kind of representation, that kind of feeling would belong in a place where you would have a lot of American flags flying around, you know, really all the time because it's America, really. That's, I could have just TLDR'd this and say, because this is America, we have many flags. And I think I actually tried to do that maybe two minutes ago. I just ended up going off on a tangent. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, and I, find, I figure out I have a big American flag asset, too, so I decided to put one in front of the school. And uh, there is the little um, banner of the American flag colors, which I was looking for when I uh, decided to actually... Oh, yeah, hang on, this is going to end. So uh, I'll see you guys next time then, I guess. Peace.